Dr. Daniel Van Ingen. I'm a clinical psychologist in Sarasota, Florida, and I'm co-founder of Parenting Doctors. And today, I want to talk about uh, social media and its impact on the culture and what families can do about it. We've seen now lots of changes in our culture over the last 10 years. Uh, we're on the 10th anniversary of the Android and the iPhone, and uh, we've seen a lot of changes, especially over the last five years. Uh, since the, the uh, Great Recession between 2007 and 2009, by 2012, the majority of kids started having their own smartphone. And what we're seeing now over the last five years is an increase in depression among teenagers. We're seeing kids delaying getting a driver's license. We're seeing kids spending less time uh, with their friends as they used to in the past. Uh, we're seeing um, teenagers delaying getting jobs uh, out in the community, um, and they are just more unhappy. We're seeing um, teenagers spending less time with their friends doing other activities because they're at home alone engaging on their cell phones. And this includes ignoring family members. Um, so kids are l more lonely, more isolated, more depressed uh, over the last five years. And a lot of this can go to uh, spending time on their smartphones. So what can families do about it? And uh, believe it or not, not all teenagers have their hands on a smartphone and have their lives revolving around a smartphone. Um, in terms of what the apps teens are using, 76% are on uh, Instagram, 75% of teens are using Snapchat, and 66% of teens are using Facebook. So they are wrapped up in these uh, social apps, but that's not the case for all teens. And there are some teenagers trying to figure out how do I navigate being able to go to parties, being able to be involved with activities, being able to connect and communicate with friends, but not dependent solely on uh, the apps, the social media, and smartphones. So what can families do for those uh, who have tweens becoming teens, for children becoming tweens, and what can families do in terms of uh, dealing with the change in the culture we've seen over the last five years? First, we need to acknowledge that research shows that more screen time leads to less happiness. And specifically, more time spent on social media is associated with more unhappiness. Um, so for happiness, agree on limits. That means parents themselves should be phone free after school and, and uh, until the kids go to bed. So any awake time. So, so approximately 3.30 p.m. to uh, 8 or 9 p.m. That's when parents are phone free. They model excellence in terms of having limits. What else can families do? Uh, make a priority to have technology-free dinners as a family. Success for family depends on having family dinners. Establish screen-free zones in the house so there's no phones in the bedroom, no phones at the dinner table. Also, identify another location that can be phone-free, um, such as the library or the TV room. When a family is watching a movie together, uh, families are... Uh, not multitasking. Instead, they're, they're focusing in on a shared activity for the family. Uh, also, make the phone, the, uh, make the car phone free. Come up with red light questions, ways to engage with kids. Uh, instead of looking around for the police officer and then quickly grabbing the phone uh, to send an email, a work email, instead, uh, focus on engagement. Focus in on the relationship, the parent-child relationship. So free sc screen-free zones, bedroom, TV dinner, or, or the dinner table, and also the car. And establish a park zone on the counter for phones during sleep time. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, is happening since 2012 is Teenagers are getting less sleep. There's a huge drop in sleep. The average teenager reports getting six and a half hours of sleep per week night. Teens need 
nine, nine and a half hours of sleep per night. Um, it's eight to ten uh, recommendation by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, but teens do better uh, the more sleep they get. So nine, nine and a half hours of sleep is going to make them more functional when dealing with calculus, when engaging in athletics, when using their imagination and creativity uh, for artwork and music. So teens are going to do better socially when they get more sleep. Um, also, have a regular have regular family discussions on what it means to have freedom from phones. Discussions on freedom. Um, what does it mean to be peaceful without phone access? Sometimes teenagers have panic attacks when they forget their phone. Now, when that's reported, uh, and, and I've been over 30 states and been in over 100 cities uh, training counselors, psychologists, social workers, um, marriage and family therapists, occupational therapists on the best ways to uh, treat anxiety. And one of the things that I'm seeing, we are seeing across the country is an anxiety epidemic. So it's not just increase in depression and increase in unhappiness, but we're seeing an anxiety epidemic. And that can go to, uh, the pho there's a lot of phone anxiety. And, and so, so I, I laugh when I say, how a, when I hear the story of how a phone or a phone was forgotten, which led to panic attacks. Well, teenagers often grab the phone before they grab a towel when they get out of a shower. So how does a teen forget? <laughs> um, but, you know, what are the, having those discussions on freedom, you know, what are um, the real need? When, when, when kids reach for phones, they have a real need to connect. And that is one of the ways that teens connect. Um, but what are authentic ways to connect besides using the phone? And on the topic of FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, uh, it, it, it can be, they see a, a picture uh, and they think, I'm missing out. I'm not in that place. And so the compare contrast uh, comes up. And so that becomes a major stressor. Uh, for teens, but having those discussions. Does my child have a fear of being left out? Uh, and why? Exploring that at, at family dinner. How else, you know, how can we approach family vacations without phones? Uh, I've been in situations where uh, going around on a train at a, a major fair or, or Disney World or Dollywood in, in Tennessee and you have a family of four all on their phones for the entire 30 minutes. Um, you might say, you know, that's how they're getting updated on Graham in the hospital. Um, I mean, who knows? But a 30 minute missing out and so mindfulness, being able to engage in the moment, being able to enjoy relationships. Having discussions on freedom from phones is key for a family. Also, uh, establish a principle of not getting drawn into social media screens uh, that are established for the purpose of keeping users on social media for long periods of time. You know, examples like a snap streak on Snapchat, being free from that. Um, also, in the context of discussion on freedom, uh, helping teens and tweens develop marketing savvy and thinking critically about their digital footprint on social media apps. They do leave a footprint, an information footprint that gets followed. Uh, things like product reviews or hashtag uh, campaigns. You know, uh, you take a selfie, uh, hashtag, you know, wear these jeans. Uh, also, geo filters, these creative overlays on Snapchat. They all have the same mission, to use kids to do their marketing. And these things are followed. This information digital footprint is followed by big companies that are using them, following them. Uh, it may be a free gimmick for the teen, but they're being followed. And so having discussions on how um, they're marketing for these companies and how companies are using them and establish a principle of not getting drawn into schemes. And this goes along with freedom from phones, but also the whole discussion of freedom and, and where they want to have phones fit in, in terms of their digital footprint. Um, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, establishing limits, acknowledging that increased phone use uh, leads to unhappiness, 
establishing limits, screen-free zones in the house, having a park zone because that sleep wakefulness cycle is key. So not using the phone an hour before sleep time uh, for all family members, including parents. And then discussions on freedom from phones and the important critical element of the digital footprint. My name is Dr. Daniel Van Ingen. You can follow us uh, at uh, our website, parentingdoctors.com. Check us out for free resources. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook uh, as well as uh, Twitter at Parenting Doctors. Uh, this is, uh, has been great. Um, check us out at YouTube. And we're doing a lot as far as trying to solve this anxiety epidemic and teach parents and engage in that process with parents on, on being the best that we can be uh, in changing this culture for the good of kids. Wish you the best.